Right, so we're carrying on with our testing of the PS5 and expanded storage. And right now we are booting up my PS5 with the Sabrent 4TB, the Rocket 4 Plus. This is one that I've really been looking forward to testing out on the console, mainly because it's the biggest M2 NVMe SSD I've got and it takes advantage of the Fison E18 controller. And although there are some hot, 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 SSDs that are supported in the beta you know let's say disclaimer at the moment we never know how things are going to change right now this is one of those ones that's very very attainable and in stock in a lot of places so it's one that a lot of people have been considering so the cold boot we've already booted the device up hence that black screen it's worth highlighting I am recording this video on OBS or via a PC connected via a, um, a capture device HD capture and I should highlight that because of the capture software where things are going to get a tiny bit pixely at times throughout this video. I noticed it in my previous video with the Samsung 980 Pro, and I do think it's worth highlighting here. Don't worry, it's nothing to do with the drive, nothing to do with the PlayStation. It's just a recording software trying to capture uh, things and capping it at 29 frames per second over 30. So, the first thing we're going to need to do is format our SSD. We've already applied the beta. Let's have a little look. So we can let it format the drive nice and quick. Remember, this is a 4TB drive, and the speed we're getting there is a lovely 6,557. It might be 6357, but it's worth highlighting. Because of my recording software, I'm looking at a much, much, much smaller screen than you. There we go, 6557. I actually had to lean in. Sorry about that. It's also worth highlighting the sound quality right now because I'm not recording in my usual studio. I'm recording, I'll be honest, in my own home right now. And this is not a recording area. And I've had to do this a little bit on the quick while I've got all these things together. So I apologize for the sound quality. And when I do uh, larger comparison content between drives, the sound quality will be better, I promise. But let's go ahead and boot the PS5 with the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus SSD inside. Be lovely and quick. And just like my Samsung uh, 980 Pro testing, which should be live before this one. There I am there in the middle cooking with a barbecue, looking like a tit. Let's go ahead and boot that up. There's the beta software splash. Um, I should highlight that we're testing four games. Just like my other video, we are looking at control. Destruction All-Stars, Destiny 2, and Man Eater. Now, all of these games right now are currently on the console storage. As you can see there on the bottom right of the screen, console storage. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to quickly check that the M2 NVMe is visible. And then we're going to move those games over. Because we've already done bench testing of those games uh, booting into game on the console storage. And we want to see how they look when we present them from the M2 NVMe. That's the Brent. So straight away we'll go into the storage area. And as you can see, console storage and boom. There's our 4 terabyte Sabrent Rocket Plus with sod all on the drive right now. So let's go ahead and move those games over. So let's make our way back in we right click we go down to move games and apps and we're going to be moving just those four games over so again so brent destruction all stars destiny 2 and man eater again it's not a huge amount of data but the reason we're selecting these games is they've got relatively uh, easy to manage boot cycles to synchronize between different games and also they're the only games readily available on this system right now so let's go ahead and move these and while it moves those games I will talk a little bit uh, about the transfer. Something we saw when we were moving games with the Samsung 980 Pro. Um, now, on the, the internal PlayStation system is clearly doing some kind of check during these back and forth transfers. It's what we saw when we were doing the PS5 uh, external archive storage update. I don't know if you guys remember when you could move games onto an external SSD or hard drive just for archiving, you couldn't play from them. And you definitely saw that even when you were moving small files between the internal and an external or at least a parallel storage area, it definitely took more time than you would expect for some of the performance benchmarks within these systems. And that can only be down to the core system running checks, be it for anti-piracy, be it for anti-checks, it could be anything. But right now, that is why what you're seeing on screen, the moving of data is steady, definitely steady, 
but not what you would expect from traditional SSDs like these when we've done file transfers previously. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fast forward a little bit to when these games are ready. And then during that, what we're going to be doing is booting these games up uh, and comparing them in real time, oh, I'll say real time, comparing them at least real time for you on screen against how long those exact same games took to boot directly from the console storage, not from the M2 NVMe storage. Another thing I will be keen to highlight is the idea that three of those games are going to be booted from their respective title screens because these are games that have unskippable branding and um, you know game creator and development studio logos. So I thought that would be unfair to include them in the boot cycle because they are unskippable just there's no point keeping them. And only Control is a game that you can largely cleanly boot from the desktop there. So if we carry on and look down at the information, you can see on the bottom right of the screen there, M2 SSD storage. The games, all four, have been moved over now to the M2 NVMe there, the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus down there at the bottom right. And finally, we've got Maneater there at the bottom. So what we're going to do is boot these games up and we're going to see how they compare against that of the games that we booted from the console earlier. So I'm going to load up Manny the first. Don't worry, we're not counting yet. This game has a bunch of development studio logos that are unskippable. We're only going to be comparing these from the strict title screen. I might not talk during the loading screen there. Because again, I am comparing against something from the past, and because I'm using screen recording, I can't see that the way you guys can. But I will talk perhaps a little bit afterwards, but hopefully you guys can make up a lot of the decisions from yourself just looking at the sheer load times between these games, between the console storage and the M2 NVMe. We're almost at the title screen now, and here we go. We're going to get onto it there. Here we are at the title screen. So I'm going to go ahead and put them side by side and get ready to start now. Let's go. We're looking at the loading screen there. Pissed off looking shark. I know what you're thinking. This guy really loves his voice. Um, and we're in the game. So we're loading pretty darn quick there. Again, unsurprisingly, I'm right here at the beginning of the game, and I really do need to play with the inversion of the controls because I am doing a right pig's breakfast of this. But nonetheless, I think that loading there was pretty on the money. Let's be realistic. Sorry about the pixelation there on screen. Once again, that's a screen capture. But for now, let's make our way into the next game. Okay, so here we are on the title screen of Destiny 2. We're going to repeat the process once again, loading from the game that's here on side the M2 story. So let's go ahead and compare the load screens now. This one's got a few skippable uh, cutscenes that I'm going to rapidly tapping circle on, by the way, but it's the same on both consoles, don't worry. I'm going to have to select my save game as we go to. Here we go there. Again, there may be a fractional delay there while I was selecting that cutscene. And now I'm just smashing the circle button while I skip some of the uh, cutscenes cut earlier on in this game so we can make our way directly into the game while it loads there in the background. You can see where it says skip. And we'll shortly be in the game. And we'll hopefully be able to see how these two have panned out here on the screen in front of you. And there we are at the start of Destiny 2. And again, look at that desolation there. That's kind of like what Croydon looks like on a Friday night about 2 or 3 a.m. But again, as we can see, the game loading absolutely fine. Ignore the pixelation once again. That is OBS there. Uh, making a bit of a pig's breakfast of things. We're doing quite a lot of stuff here at once here during the recording. But again, I think that's enough for Destiny 2. Let's make our way onto Destruction All-Stars. Right, so here we are on Destruction All-Stars. Once again, running from the M2 NVMe storage on the Sabren Rocket 4 Plus. So without further ado, let's see how these games compare. Slight delay there on how quickly I could tap the circle button there. Um, I do apologise. But again, that should make absolutely no difference in the comparison. Mere milliseconds. But as you can see, the game should be loading up absolutely fine on both of these. So we can go ahead and load straight into the game. 
Let's go ahead and jump straight into it, shall we? Making our way in. And boom, we're in the game. We can skip that little help panel there and just make our way straight in. I'll be honest, that was embarrassing, wasn't it? I'm only keeping half an eye on the game right now and half an eye on what's happening here on in front of me on the laptop. But for me, that's still working absolutely fine. So I think now we can move on to our final game here, which is going to be Control. As mentioned, Control is one of the few games that we're going to be looking at that's a direct boot from the XMB here. So once again, we're going to direct boot from here and we're going to be loading it up on both the console and the M2. So without further ado, double checking right there, as you can see there on screen that it is the M2 NVMe. Let's go ahead and boot this game on the M2 versus the console. Rapidly tapping the buttons on the controller, of course, to skip things as we go can make our way directly into the game, into that awful area, I think a lot of people would agree is one of the horrible areas of the game, control. Loading from the same safe spot, boom, we're in the corridor, we can keep things moving. And again, lovely quick boot there from the Sabren, we're doing absolutely fine there. And I think that's a good enough sign there for me, I think we can all agree that that is booting there, and it's not been not too shabby indeed it's loaded absolutely fine from the game so i think there we go we've tested our four games and the last thing i'm going to do to, for the end of this video of course is to make our way into the psn here and we're going to transfer these games back onto the storage we're going to go ahead and move the games back onto the storage for my next video but also so we can see how the system handles transferring data back onto the console storage from the M2 storage. Let's go ahead and click move. Let's confirm it there. And once again, this will be another example of how the system is definitely doing some kind of checks there in the middle. When we repeated this large, um, this last part of the testing on the Samsung 980 Pro 250 gig, a lot of people, myself included, were wondering if the capacity of that drive and the lower read speed that it has, I believe at 4,100 megabytes per second, was forming something of a bottleneck. And I think arguably looking at the speed that this is taking now to move this data from the SSD to the console, um, I think moving it the other way around, um, it's pretty much going at the same speed. So I do think the system, the system's checks that happen in between does serve as something of a bottleneck during this transfer. But this has been my early testing of the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus 4TB NVMe M2 SSD for PS5. Do bear in mind that all of these tests right now are being conducted on the beta. We will be revisiting a number of these tests when this software update comes out of beta one to see how things have changed and two if sony's position on mvmes and their handling of mvmes during the beta testing phase has changed things for the better or potentially for the worse but thank you so much for watching if you have enjoyed this click like it really helps me out understanding what exactly you guys like i generally talk a lot about storage and PS5 stuff on this channel has always been a personal passion project of my own. Um, but, of course, if you want to learn more, stay abreast of we test more and more and more SSDs on this system, then do subscribe. And do take advantage of both the links in the description to all the heat sinks and SSDs that we talk about along with the guides, as well as the free advice section over on NAS Compares. It is genuinely completely free, and it helps people understand the right storage they need. It's completely free. It's manned by me and Eddie, the web guy. It is a free service that we can help you get the right data storage solutions for you. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you next time.